Picture this. It's the summer of 2009, late June, and suddenly the news appears. We're getting some breaking news coming into the situation right now from uh, about Michael Jackson, the King of Pop. The King of Pop has died. He's pumping his chest, but he's not responding to anything. Michael Jackson was taken to the UCLA Medical Center approximately two and a half hours ago. Michael Jackson is dead. It was sudden, shocking, and for many, strange. Michael wasn't very old, and he seemed healthy. Well, healthy enough. And for many, it was just impossible to believe that a man as legendary as Michael Jackson could ever die. But his death swept the nation, and it affected so many people. For better or for worse. But a few months pass by. The media is in a frenzy. Everyone's trying to gather as much info as possible about Michael Jackson, his past, his life, his legacy, and any remaining songs he may have had that went unreleased. Then, a few months go by, and on September 3rd, 2009, someone on YouTube uploads this video titled, Michael Jackson, Sexy Lady, uploaded by someone named Michael Jackson 804. And this is what the video contains. This video was uploaded just 70 days after Michael Jackson's reported death, and to this day, nearly 15 years later, nobody knows where this song came from. Allegedly, it's a song sung by Michael Jackson, and man, it sure does sound like it. It's got pretty much every cadence of his, every little hint of his voice, and the pitch itself is a lot like his usual singing. Obviously, I can't show examples of his songs side by side in order to compare this song with any other MJ song, but I think most of you already know how he sings. But how is it that this song, seemingly sung by Michael himself, found its way to one lone user? Is it perhaps someone MJ knew? Maybe someone who worked on the song? Well, I highly doubt that, as the song's video seems to show a young girl who is likely the creator of this video and likely just a huge MJ fan. Yet that only brings about more questions than answers. Allegedly, this song was being circulated around through the pirating software LimeWire, which, if you don't know what that is, basically it's a media sharing client that had people upload videos, movies, and games for free by simply uploading them and having other people download them. Much like torrents, only upfront and visibly illegal. I won't lie though, I listen to all of my music through LimeWire. No fucking joke, as a kid that's how I got pretty much all of my favorite songs and music. Why am I mentioning this? However, that doesn't mean that this is where the source of the video's audio is from, but it is mentioned on this Portuguese blog post that someone had downloaded the song via LimeWire alongside two other songs that were unreleased. It was speculated by this person writing the blog post that these were legit Michael Jackson songs that were leaked to the public by someone who worked close with MJ. And though this might be true of both Serious Effect and She Got It, the aforementioned leaked songs, this one song, Sexy Lady, is still a mystery. It's a mystery mainly because the former songs were confirmed to have been leaked two years prior to MJ's death, while Sexy Lady came just three months after MJ's death. And due to the fact that there's little to no info on the song itself, like what album it's from, who the backup singers were, and the low visibility of the song in general, it remains to be unresolved. Could it be that Michael Jackson was still alive? Well, Probably not, but whenever an artist like Michael Jackson passes away, many people grasp for straws as to, quote unquote, the real whereabouts of said artist, saying they could have faked their own death and all that sort of stuff. Around this time, many theories suggested that Michael Jackson had just faked his own death and wanted to exit the limelight, even going so far as to say that this man, who goes by Dave Dave, is allegedly Michael Jackson. 
Yes, seriously, there were rumors that this real burn victim was Michael Jackson. And you know something? It's almost crazy enough to believe. The dude has small idiosyncrasies that are very emblematic of Michael Jackson's, well, presence. Even his voice sounds like Michael Jackson's wanted to meet me. How old were you at the time? I was about seven years old at the time. And were you in the hospital? I was not in the hospital at the time. I was, I was in interim back and forth from surgery. Take away some of the more defining features such as the mouth and eyes and it sort of does make you wonder if this was just Michael Jackson in disguise, but of course that's not the case. Dave Dave is a real person, or I should say was a real person and a real artist, and Michael Jackson really is dead. So where could this song have come from if not him? A producer? A singer? Maybe one of his music labels quote unquote leaked his music during this time as a way to promote a new album of his unreleased songs. That's not even really a new practice either. Many artists who have passed away have had their unreleased songs posthumously released to the public through tribute albums or something of the like. It's very common to sell remastered versions of songs or even unreleased songs after said musician dies. However, the strange thing is, while both She Got It and Serious Effect were eventually confirmed to have been performed by Michael Jackson, the same can't be said about Sexy Lady. Currently, it's unknown who wrote, produced, or even sung the song. Yeah, that's right. The person singing it is most likely not even MJ. See, lots of songs were misattributed all the time, titles and songs, and even band names were always different from the actual source whenever they were found on Torrents or LimeWire or any sort of peer-to-peer -peer kind of song sharing websites, you know? And honestly, as close as that does sound like MJ, many people have speculated it's really not him. So now we're stuck with a few questions. Where did this song come from? Who's the singer performing these songs? And if it's not Michael Jackson, was it an imposter or just someone who happened to sound like Michael that was singing this song? Let's go over the first question. Where did the song come from? Uploaded as early as 2009, the true origin of this song remained a mystery for a long time. That is until someone else made the same inquiry into the song. User Cebu on whatsthatsong.com <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. Asked if anyone knew the name of the song and showed a 30 second preview of Sexy Lady. Only this time, something was different. The tempo of the song was slightly different, the quality was way better, and the instruments as well as the backing vocals were all different from the version of the song most people were used to. I'm going to compare the two versions right now, during two points of each song where it's most notably different from each other. Take a listen. Now people were more divided than before. Lots of people were now saying it sounds nothing like Michael at all, and obviously there was some confusion as to where this version of the song came from. Where did the person who originally made this post find this song? Well that's the interesting part. If you download the actual audio provided by the person who originally made the post, you can see that within the metadata there's more info on the song itself. According to the metadata, the artist is Michael Jackson, and the album is Frequencia Maxima Volume 18. This is a pretty huge find. This came from an actual album, somewhere other than LimeWire, a tangible source, and it also says the artist is Michael Jackson. That should be a closed case, right? This is MJ, right? Well. If it really was a song by Michael Jackson, why hasn't anyone claimed it? The other leaked songs were eventually picked up and registered by various music companies and labels he worked with, yet this one has remained unregistered to anyone. And if this really is Michael Jackson's song, why is it that the only place this was released was in a completely different country under a completely different band? 
We'll get back to that shortly, but first, let's talk about the album itself. Looking it up, we can easily find that this album is fully available on YouTube, and wouldn't you know it, our mystery song is right there. The description, well, it's Portuguese, but thankfully someone translated the more important parts. The description of this video, which is in Portuguese, talks about a band called Frequencia Maxima, which was started by two band members, DJ Marino and Brauilo. The band later got more members and ended up with a total of seven members. The band appears to be releasing a lot of CDs. Could this song be made by Frequencia Maxima and released on one of those CDs? Now dissecting that, we have three interesting things. First is DJ Marino himself, who is the co-creator of Frequencia Maxima. His info is readily available in the description, right down to his WhatsApp number, which I won't show, and his Facebook account, which again, I won't show. Now as far as I'm concerned, nobody has contacted Marino himself, though the comments have claimed that someone did text him and he said that he doesn't remember, but I can't find any evidence of anyone contacting Marino, so at this point it just seems like hearsay. Now of course, I probably don't need to say this, but as a precaution, please don't harass DJ Marino. It's inevitable that someone out there is going to ask him some questions, as that might help us further the investigation. But as always, be cordial and be respectful. Thank you. DJ Marino most likely did not create or produce this song anyways, as this entire album is just a collection of his most popular music that he played during his career. Sexy Lady just happens to be one of them. Secondly, while we're on it, their entire collection, that is Frequency and Maxima's collection, is found entirely in the description via Spotify and Deezer. There are 450 songs in this entire collection and over 30 hours of audio. But it seems like not a single one of these songs happened to be Sexy Lady. Maybe the song itself is under a different name, but if it were that easy, this would have been solved ages ago. And to be frank, I'm not about to listen over 30 hours of songs just to see if Sexy Lady is there. Chances are it's probably not either. Thirdly, if this really is true, that Frequencia Maxima started sometime in the mid-90s and sold its first collection of songs in 98, then working with this time frame, we can estimate that Sexy Lady came out sometime between 98 to 2004. Why 2004? Well, digging a bit further, we can see that Frequencia Maxima had released several volumes, multiple ones a year, and thankfully using this channel called Dance to Sol, we can see that Frequencia Maxima, Volume 20, the closest to Volume 18, came out in 2004. And seeing as how multiple volumes released in a year, as seen in this screenshot that shows Volumes 4 through 9, came out within the year 2000 and 2001, it can be determined that Volume 18 came out in either 2003 or 2004. So with all that said, Sexy Lady came out a few months after MJ's death and many people claimed that it was his, an unreleased leak song. However, the reality is, is that this was made years prior to MJ's death. So no, it was not somehow made by MJ. There is no conspiracy that he's hiding and still making music to this day. He is just dead. <laughs> That's so grim. No, but I mean, it's true, he's fucking dead. And it certainly is not an unreleased song, because honestly, if this was an unreleased Michael Jackson song, why would a random DJ, no offense to Marino, suddenly have his hands on a rare piece of music outside of said music's origin all the way out in Brazil? So, unless DJ Marino somehow has ties to an underground Hollywood black market leaking music to random DJs around the world, then it's highly unlikely that this song, despite sounding like Michael Jackson, is Michael Jackson. But instead, someone who sounds like Michael. Or perhaps, more interestingly, someone impersonating Michael. And that leads us to our last question. Who sung this song? and are they trying to pass themselves off as Michael Jackson? That is ultimately going to be the trickiest question to answer possible because honestly, there's a ton of people who fit the bill of sounding like Michael Jackson. As unique as his voice is, during his time, Michael was an inspiration to many musicians, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them took their singing style from his music. It may not be that the person singing the song is an impersonator or an imposter, but someone rather small and similar sound to MJ. 
The reasons I think this is simply because it goes back to the metadata found in the audio. Whoever gave DJ Marino this audio claimed it was from Michael Jackson and successfully got away with it too, as even the DJ believes so. So now the search becomes way more nebulous, but using the process of elimination, we can at least narrow this down slightly. <clears throat> okay. So, first of all, the singer of this is definitely not a major artist. It has to be someone pretty underground. Maybe someone who was more of a one-hit wonder kind of guy, but generally someone who is a bit more indie, maybe even signed under a smaller label, or never signed to anyone at all. Secondly, the artist has to be around from the late 90s to early 2000s. It's possible that they were someone from maybe earlier than that, but it's likely that if you're going to put current and popular music on your CD collection, you'd most likely use the most recent jams. It's definitely not always the case, but it's more likely to be a recent song at the time. Third, the singer must have experience in reggae music as this song is very clearly a reggae song. It's likely that's a genre that they're more familiar with, but it's possible that they could sing outside of that. And fourth and finally, the singer has to sound like Michael Jackson in tone. Duh. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the most suspected singers to be this mysterious song's main performer. Uh, <laughs> Charles and Eddie were a former duo back in the 90s, accomplishing quite a few hits, especially over in the UK. They didn't last very long, however, as in 1997, the duo split up amicably, and Charles Pettigrew sadly died of cancer in 2001. Listening to one of their songs, we can hear that Eddie Chacon has a much higher vocal range that sounds very similar to how Michael sings. Take a listen. Honestly though, it's very unlikely to be Eddie Chacon. The timeline doesn't really match up. The two, like I said, split up in 97, years before Volume 18 released. And additionally, Eddie moved on from music and began a career in photography and creative directing, only returning to music 20 years later. But who knows? Oh shit, Mikey Jackson! Shavlar! Peter Andre is a British singer that no longer sings but has a strong vocal identity to Michael Jackson. So many of his songs has the same pitch as Michael and also have a slight accent to them. Same with the previous songs. In fact, one of his songs just straight up sounds nearly identical to Sexy Lady called Mysterious Girl. Walking on the shore. I try to concentrate, my mind wants to explore. Now, other than sounding exactly like MJ and having music that sounds like his, it's almost unlikely that this is the real singer as he's a relatively well-known singer from the 90s and 2000s. Still, music like this can go unnoticed, so we'll continue looking. And look we shall, with one of the biggest motherfucking contenders as sexy lady singer... <laughs> Okay, now I'll be real, this is more of a deep rabbit hole that I wanted to talk about just because it's so fascinating, but buckle up. Jason Malaki is a controversial singer whose voice and singing cadence has pretty much perfectly mirrored MJ's singing, so much so that people thought he was Michael Jackson back in 2007 when a song called Mamacita was uploaded by a Michael Jackson fan thinking it was a leaked song. News stations even covered this, thinking it was really an MJ leak. In reality, this song was sung by Malaki back in 2000 with producer Tony Curtis singing the hook of the song. However, instead of just being mistaken to be Michael Jackson, the true controversy lies with the fact that his vocals might have been used to impersonate MJ on purpose to sell music under his name without fans knowing. 
on multiple occasions even, most famously with the posthumous album Michael, which was released about two years after MJ's death, and featured songs that were then unreleased and reworked for the new album. This is where it gets interesting though. Check it out. Apparently, three songs in this album, written by Eddie Cassio, were allegedly not sung by Michael Jackson at all. In fact, for years now, fans have speculated that these three songs were all sung by Jason Malaki. Even the producers of this album, as well as his own family, had doubts that these three songs were sung by Michael. The three songs being Keep Your Head Up, Monster, and Breaking News. And as of 2022, these songs were claimed to be Michael Jackson songs for 12 years until they were forcibly removed due to a recent lawsuit against the album and the claims that these weren't actually sung by Michael Jackson. Now, there's mixed reports as to whether or not Sony Music has admitted to these songs being sung by Malaki, but as far as I'm concerned, this lawsuit is still being fought as of 2024. It also doesn't help that Casio tried re-releasing these three songs alongside nine other singles by MJ that he somehow just had stored as a collector's item on a burned CD and tried selling it in an auction as an authentic recording of 12 lost Michael Jackson songs that he wrote with MJ himself. Of course, when a collector bought these and re-uploaded these songs, fans once again were skeptical and claimed that it was sung by Malaki and not Michael Jackson. Yes, he did it a fucking again. So with all that out of the way, Malaki, almost without a doubt, has had multiple instances of him purposely impersonating Michael Jackson, even despite him saying that it's not true. It's pretty obvious that he adopted MJ's singing style and has a pretty good career of just sounding and singing like him. So I mean, it could be fucking true and he's just lying to like save his skin. Now, I don't want to paint him out to be as some sort of con artist. He does have a career outside of impersonating MJ, but with so many claims of him impersonating Michael and trying to sell it off as MJ himself, then it's really hard to say if he's singing like MJ in good faith or not. The fact that a song he sung back in the year 2000 was later misidentified as a leaked song by Michael Jackson in 2000 also makes him a very strong candidate as our MJ impersonator. But when all is said and done, nobody can be truly sure just as to who sang these songs. There is a possibility that it was all sung by MJ, which I highly doubt, but there's the highly more likely chance that it was sung by an imposter. Truth is, we just might never know, and that's something we just have to accept. Nobody knows where Sexy Lady came from, and that just may be the case forever, honestly. It's just a matter of life. Well, at least the full song is available on YouTube for all to listen. So, if you enjoyed the snippets that I showed you, make sure to listen to it when you can, because the real musician may never be found. Thank you everyone so very much for watching. I'll see you... Holy fucking shit, the real musician was found. So, this is an addendum to the video. Literally, pretty much as I was wrapping up the video itself, I happened to notice one of the links I used for the reference was different. It no longer had the original thumbnail, but this instead. Joyem, sexy lady, and lo and fucking behold, it's true. The singer is Joyem, a German singer who worked under Scream Media? I think that's how it's pronounced. Now, I'm gonna be real. The amount of info on both Scream Media, spelled incorrectly on their YouTube channel, by the way, and Joyum are extremely limited. They're just very obscure and questionable. Uh, that being said, when we actually observe Joyum's previous songs, we can hear that he sings much like a Michael Jackson impersonator, getting every little inflection and vibrato down as if he's trying to sound like him.
yeah, no doubt. This is our guy. The info was brought to everyone's attention when user Moises G found the audio by, get this, complete luck. Here's more info. It's a short story. I was watching the most recent videos of Awesome Animations, a small YouTube channel, where this song appeared but distorted. I liked the song, so I decided to look for the song. After searching many terms and realizing that it was a lost wave, I searched something like Sexy Lady Lost Media Slash Song and found the result that said Joyum Sexy Lady, the ski music video. Then I checked that if it was true and I published it on Reddit. All of this was found on April the 1st, 2024. Now, as of right now, everyone is reportedly saying that this song, Sexy Lady, was released back in 2009. And though that may be true with the upload of the song, I can't say for certain that this song really was made in 2009. Referring back to when I mentioned Frequency and Maxima publishing their greatest hits albums back in 1997, we can see that 2004 was around the time Volume 18 released, which is the volume that had Sexy Lady in it. But remember, these two songs are actually different versions. So it could be possible that this version of the song, found on Frequency and Maxima, is just a demo version of the song, an incomplete version which Joyum could have sold before he got to Scream Media, as he was an active musician back in the 90s, as noted with his old single, this one released back in 1996. So even though these two are the same songs, both versions were made at a different time. Joyum used to even sell a demo of another song too, a CD containing that one single, so it's likely that Joyum sold his singles at parties, raves, etc. And somehow this one demo of his song found its way all the way to Brazil, where DJ Marino found himself a copy of, possibly illegitimately as even he himself thought the singer was Michael Jackson. Either someone sold it to him and lied that it was some sort of MJ leaked underground copy, or Marino himself thought it really was a Michael Jackson song and just stumbled upon it some other way. Either way, this demo version of the song was incomplete. The 2009 version is likely a remaster version, as it contains different backing vocals from the one in Frequency of Maxima's album. These backing vocals, by the way, the singer himself, can actually be heard in another Joyum song. So Marino himself must have added his own producer tag in this specific version of the song, the demo that is. This version somehow made it all the way to Brazil despite originating in Germany and possibly other European nightclubs. Remember though, this is the early 2000s, around the time LimeWire, Napster, and other peer-to-peer -peer services existed. This could have easily have been downloaded from there as opposed to the CD itself making it to Brazil. So yes, much like how Michael Jackson 804 found a misattributed song and uploaded it assuming it really was sung by MJ, DJ Marino too likely found a demo version of this song possibly through LimeWire or Napster, and assumed it was a Michael Jackson song. Meanwhile, Joyam not once received the proper credit for this song for 20 years exactly. On the anniversary it was first misattributed, this song has now finally been identified correctly, and proper credit can now be given. Holy shit. I didn't think that this video would be that long, <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed. Thank you all so very much for watching. I love y'all so much. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.